I am a 48-year-old white English guy. I'm nothing of the sort. That's, that's not who I am. That's, that's, that's my temporary existence and, and uh, the place and the time which I am embodied in. But it's no way what I am. It's absolutely no way who I really am. It's kind of what I do. It's the vehicle that I use. Um, it's the setting that I found myself in. It's the way that I move through life, but it's not who I am. And to make, to separate that out is really crucial, but a bit tricky. Hello and welcome to the Mind Detox podcast. Here, we're going to discover a new way to think, feel and heal while exploring our spiritual side. I'm your host, Sandy Newbigging, also known as the Mind Detox Monk. Because, well, I'm a monk and a meditation teacher, and for the past 15 years or so, I've been working with people from around the world using a method that I accidentally created called Mind Detox. Mind Detox is all about curing the unconscious causes of physical, emotional, or life issues. So stick around if something is going on in your body, emotions, or life, and you don't know why, because we'll be exploring the possible mind-based causes during this or an upcoming episode. As a monk who's written 12 books and meditated for thousands of hours, the topics of inner peace and living in the present moment will most likely be a thread that runs through many of our episodes. So stick around again if you want to stress less and be still more. This podcast includes highlights from my online club and academy meetings, expert interviews, guided meditations, and more all so that you can cure the cause and master peace. For today's episode, I'm sharing a recently recorded chit chat with Richard Abbott, expert numerologist and author of a number of books, including the upcoming Soul Strong. We talk about numerology's take on 2020, highlight how to know if we've ever become accidentally brainwashed and discuss staying strong amidst everything that's going on this year so we can make the move from fear to freedom. Hello, Richard Abbott. Hello, Sandy. Oh, my old friend. How are you? Long time no see. Long time no see, especially in physical form. Mm, Absolutely. (laughs) Um, Thank you so much for agreeing to have a chat with me today. Thanks for asking me. Lovely to be here. I, I love that we're friends, and I, and I love how you say old friend, because it does feel like that, um, beyond uh, even the years we've known each other. And I, I love our friendship because I always leave more intrigued about life, more fascinated about what's going on in the world. Um, I love how you're able to communicate things, and uh, you keep the mystery and the magic alive for me, so thank you for that. Um, that was you very are- kind, mate. Thank you. You are an expert in uh, numerology and amongst other things. Uh, you're also an author of several books. Your new book's coming out soon. What's it called? Soul Strong. Soul Strong. And um, I think that might be a theme that comes up in today's conversation. Because I, I want to talk to you, or at least get the conversation started, with, um, you know, one of the ways people use numerology is, is to understand, you know, what's happening and why and all that sort of stuff is it would that be a reasonable kind of uh loose definition <laughs> or yeah absolutely i mean it's uh it's it's a method of knowing yourself and of knowing what's going on in the world you, you can do either or both i prefer the knowing yourself bit but it does also work for knowing what's going on in the world and with that in mind, and with everything that's going on in the world, did you, through the numbers, uh, know that this was potentially coming? Well, I mean, if I'm if be completely honest, I've never uttered the word corona in my life, not even in a bar. <laughs> um, so that bit, that specific bit, no way. But it's been obvious to me for many years, a decade at least, that this year 2020 was gonna my phrase was blow the lid off of things um so corona the specific thing yeah i didn't see that but the upheaval 
the, uh, the every, everything else that's happened, the consequences, the transformation, the disruption. Yeah, that's no surprise. And um, when you say blow the lid off things, what, what things uh, ha- needed to potentially have their lid blown off, in, in your opinion? Well, um, I think a lot of the structures that we have in our society kind of have rotted from the inside, in the inside out. Um, I think a lot of, it's been building for years that there has been a lot of apprehension and and fear in the world, I think. That's been building for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it had to come to a a head and come to a kind of a full expression. And I think that's what this year has really done. It's come to a, fear has come to a full expression. I've really been feeling that, you know, as a monk meditation teacher and stuff, someone that's interested in this sort of thing, especially in talking about things like awakening and self-realization and whatever that means and things like that. Um, I have sometimes stepped back and gone, you know, what what's it going to take for more people to be motivated to look inside, find real, you know, peace and and true confidence and you know uh love and all these sorts of things um and uh at the moment if i'm completely honest it it could go either way (laughs) like this could either you know what i'm seeing is it could go either down the route of like we all use this as awakening we all realize our oneness and we all come together or or the or the the the, you know the the fear is it it seems pretty strong when you walk around the, the streets and stuff so um I guess my roundabout question is, you know, when it comes to numerology, what is it suggesting is uh, happening right now? So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you, I, I agree with what, you, with what you say. It's interesting. I'm, I'm always busy, but I've been, I've been the busiest I've ever been in terms of one-to-one consultations. That can't be much of a surprise, I suppose. Um, ever since the lockdown, we went into the lockdown in the UK in March. It, it's just been, it's been madness in terms of, number of appointments and there's a real there's a real split it it it's gone both ways i've encountered people who so it's new clients and old ones for for one-to-one consultations and half of them basically have been crushed by what has happened and they and and thrown into complete despair and and what on earth am I going to do? What on earth is going on? The other half have been like, right, this is this is it. This is this is my time to actually really um, step up, level up, do something different, make the changes that I wanted to make. So the the it could go either way. Actually, I think it's going to go both ways. I mean, that's a bit bit of a paradoxical thing to say, but I can easily see it going both ways so my thing to people that i say is when they say well is it going to get better is it going to get worse i see i say well it depends where you look and i and i really think that is true more than ever now there are a whole load of people who are up for using these energies as transformative uplifting inspirational toward love toward god if we can use the word and you stick with them you 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 float up if you if you go to the rest, I think you struggle. It, there does seem to be a real uh, polar opposites so of, of opinion and 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 few less and less people with no opinion. <laughs> um, yeah, or don't know what opinion to have. Yeah. yeah, there is. It's easy to get confused because there are so many conflicting opinions. And um, you remind me of a newsletter that you shared early in the year that I, I just read and and loved at the time and you were talking about are you brainwashed remember that <laughs> yes indeed but and can, can you can you talk a bit about about that because i thought i think it's really important in, in the in the context of what we're talking about right now of of entertaining or at least seeing these these different uh sides of any story yeah it's it's tricky though because uh brainwashing is is takes place So brainwashing takes place before you've had the chance to think about anything. So a lot of people will say, a lot of people will claim that they're not brainwashed because they're informed about stuff. Maybe that's true, you know, fine. 
But the problem with brainwashing is, is it gets at you before you've had a chance to think. So brainwashing narrows you in to a way of thinking, um, which, enable, which means that you cannot then consider the alternatives. You can't consider that, that, that something is, is not what it is told to be because you've already been run down the tracks. So it's like, uh, you know, so the, I don't want to get too uh, controversial or anything like that, but it, in order, to, in order to not be brainwashed and to make sure that you can't be brainwashed, you have to be able to consider the, the opposite of what people tell you. So you have to, anything that, that people will throw at you, authority figures, and say, you know, this is the fact, you have to be able to consider, and only consider, it doesn't mean that you have to uh, go and believe the opposite, but you have to be able to consider that the opposite is is the truth. So what's the old um, advertisement? In the UK, we used to have an advert saying, Guinness is good for you. You know, the drink Guinness. Guinness is good for you. Um, well, kind of that's become an accepted thing that Guinness is good for you. When I used to drink, I didn't mind a drop of Guinness. Um, but if you can't conceive that Guinness might actually be bad for you, and I'm not saying that it is, but if you can't conceive that it ever could be bad for you, you're done. You've been brainwashed because the message has been repeated and repeated and repeated over and over again, such that you can't even grab hold of or conceive the opposite. And I think this is what, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you today was motivated by, by this, because I think there's, um, you know, you know, you know, you know, on, on social media or whatever, there's, there's often people almost self-censoring another person saying, you, you know, you're wrong. You're not allowed to think that or whatever. And, or you unsubscribe if they don't agree with that today's yep. opinion or whatever. And, and I think that, is, you know, in the context of that, that's kind of what we're talking about, right? If you have a reaction, even to what we're saying right now, if you can't listen in a kind of, in a universal willing to hear all sides of any particular story, then what we're saying is there might be some sort of conditioning that's gone on that's reactively causing you to resist, push away and deny, as opposed to at least just being open to finding it an interesting conversation. 100%, absolutely. I mean, in my experience, uh, my personal experience, this is actually more likely, brainwashing is actually more likely amongst uh, intelligent people. Now, I would, hopefully without ego, I would class myself as, you know, kind of an intellectual, intelligent person. I don't mean anything big by that. No, I can but, second that. You know a lot about a lot of things. Uh, but, but, what, but it's not a good thing because uh, lots of intellectuals and lots of intelligent people are actually the most brainwashed. They're the most brainwashed of all because they have all this data and, and inverted commas evidence to support their view. And it makes them unable to consider that they could ever be wrong. So brainwashing is often suggested as something which happens to stupid people. I don't think so. I think it happens to, to quite in, intelligent people. And the more intelligent, the more likely. It, it's, it's interesting when you go down a road and you gather more and more information, you can start to believe that that's the, the only way because you've done your research and you, you know more than that other person. Um, it's, it's an interesting, you know, I, 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 I love an interesting conversation. It's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm talking to you today. And um, when I talk about different things that sit outside the norm of what's accepted, I get called a conspiracy theorist, you know, when actually I'm just a theorist and there's a big difference in that. I'm just curious about, well, that's what we're, that, that, there's, this, there's this out there, but there's also this out there, whatever it might be. I'm not even going to give <laughs> examples because people will nearly switch off. Like, well, he's a this or that or the next thing. And that's kind of my point. Like, it's okay to, to, to listen, but it, it, it there's a, a can be a fear from hearing something alternative to what you, you believe if you're if you're not strong in within yourself. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. Well, what, perfectly. That's actually I love that, and I will I will borrow that and use that in conversation if you don't mind, because um, it isn't about being a conspiracy theorist. I'm definitely not a conspiracy theorist, but I am a theorist. As in, I want to know. Well, is that right? Is it half right? And, and I certainly want to be exposed to it. I, I want to be exposed to uh, the most out there information that I can possibly, that can possibly be, but not so that I believe it. 
definitely not so that I believe it, so that I can check with what I do believe. Now, all right, all this takes time and maybe we haven't got time to, people haven't got time to do all this, but if there's a real, brainwashing occurs, um, brainwashing doesn't occur by some kind of Ipcris file kind of flashing lights on the screen, you know, causing your brain to malfunction. That's not brainwashing. Brainwashing is when your brain, your mind, your thinking is pushed down one track consistently, persistently, all the time. And then something happens outside of the track and you can't, you can't process it. So you, you reject it. That's and they call that cognitive dissonance, aren't they? Yeah, well, cognitive dissonance is the, is the kind of the turmoil that happens inside a person when they can't process the thing that doesn't fit their narrative. Uh, but it's brainwashing that has caused that in the first place. And there's all sorts of brainwashing, incidentally. So it's not, um, it's not a one-sided thing. You can easily say, people with any extreme view, not even extreme view, people who are, who are nailed themselves in to a particular point of view, that's when there's a brainwashing alert going on. Because the more I read and the more that I learn and the more that I know, the less that I know. That seems to be what it is. And, and, and for me, when I, the, the more I learn about, the more it's, it's actually unclear what the, what the, in the relative world, the truth is. And it, and it appears to be very relative depending on, like you said earlier, almost, you know, where you look, what you focus on and what you, what you engage with most. But, and this is for me why I, I love with the meditation stuff, knowing what I call stillness or silence or presence, because at least within that um, conflicting information, there's this sense of an inner anchor of solidity. And I don't actually have to rely on the information for my secureness because actually I have another source of secureness. Exactly. Yes. Excellent. I agree entirely. So, so my view of this is that, um, is that the body, the mind, and the feelings can deceive us. I'm not saying that they always do, but they can deceive us. So we have to be very careful. So this is where, where my kind of spiritual path takes me. I have to be very careful to, to check and double check what my mind, what my body is telling me, what my mind is telling me, and what my feelings are telling me. And it's all those three. It's not just one or other of those. It's the body, the mind, and the feelings all have the capacity to, um, to deceive us. And, and if we are hung on to and identify with our body, our thoughts, or our feelings, we're wide open to being deceived. And at the same time, with practice, with, with whatever, it might be also possible for these three elements to also be guides and provide clarity and direction. Absolutely. So the, so the trick, from my uh, perspective, the, the, the key is to, is to turn it from one state to the other. So to make sure that they're not deceiving and to develop the practices so that... Um, so that they are guides. But I think the natural state of them, the body, mind, the feelings, is that they're not guides. I think you have to, I think you have to do the practices to make them into useful guides because otherwise they're, they're deceivers. So for, for those uh, listening, and I know we don't have time to go into all, all of these exercises, but could you at least give a, what do you mean by practices? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm old school uh, mysticism, really. So it, it's, there's, it's all, it hinges around meditation. It hinges around mindfulness. It hinges around noticing. I mean, noticing actually is a big part of it. We don't want to be constantly scanning our environment for, for threats because that will put us in a fear state. But we have to be open to noticing what is going on and noticing small things that might become big things and noticing patterns, noticing what people do, noticing the difference between what they do and what they say. So I, I am a, I would call myself a professional noticer, really. I'm, I'm always like, well, what's that about? And well, that happened over there. And what's, what's going on there? 
because I think you can stitch together uh, a clearer view of the world if you're if you're prepared to kind of keep your awareness and eyes and energy wide open. Beautiful. So all, so far we're talking. You know, it's funny that we're talking about brainwashing on a mind detox because mind detox is almost like brain cleansing. <laughs> almost. Yeah. You know? We're talking about kind of um, clear cleansing yourself of potential conditioning that causes you to only see the world in one view and be freaked out or resist or react to if something else, some other information comes in that that is contradictory to our our conditioning in a way. Absolutely. So, so my attitude is is that is that the perfect state is that the mind. Uh, no, let's get this right. The perfect state is that the thinker, the thinker, um, uses the mind to produce thoughts. Now, this is just my uh, take on it. So the thinker uses the mind to produce thoughts. That's how it ought to be. But that's not how it is for most of us. And it's not certainly how it's been for me in most of my life. What happens to most situations is, is that the thoughts have got a life of their own. And that the thinker isn't actually really playing any role in the production of thoughts. The thoughts are just kind of happening like explosions all the time. The person isn't in control of their thoughts at all. Um, and actually, a person's thoughts can often be not even their thoughts. It's the thoughts of other people. I would say, like, through thousands of hours of meditation, that's one of the biggest things I've seen. The majority of my thoughts are not mine. They're someone else whether that's a, th a thought I heard on a on a documentary or from a teacher growing up or from a spiritual teacher now or whatever it's like it, it takes a would, would you say it takes a degree uh, for want of a better phrase of, of almost like self or spiritual maturity to be able to own your own mind in a way yes I would I would very much I would say that it takes a long time and maybe it, it takes it maybe it takes multiple lifetimes, but it takes a long time and it takes a lot of effort to own your own thoughts, own your own mind, have your own thoughts, and also um, have your own feelings as well. I mean, this is again brainwashing. Brainwashing is. You know, brainwashing is not just taking place by when they announce the news. I mean, in fact, the news is so obviously ridiculous now that a lot of people will, by will bypass that. But it happens in movies. It happens in drama programs. It happens in, the, um, in advertising. You know, it, it's all pushing the thoughts, pushing our feelings and our thoughts down a certain track. And uh, if you want to be... If you want to be free, you got to disconnect from that. You know, I see this a lot um, in, in my Mind Detox one-on-one -on -one work. You know, someone will come to me with some sort of issue. And Mind Detox, is, as you know, is all about resolving the root cause. Uh, one of these root, common root causes would be a past event of some kind, which could be in this lifetime, in the womb, <laughs> or before. <laughs> but, you know, even let's just talk about this lifetime to keep this relatively mainstream. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And, um, and, and, and I, how often I see someone having problems today because of beliefs, which is a form of brain conditioning, or we, you might call it brainwashing, but you know, um, these beliefs they picked up so early on that aren't even theirs. Or they've picked up the belief based on very limited life experience. We're talking two years old, two days old sometimes, three, you know, Whatever age it is, it's often before age 10 when these core beliefs that, they are, that are negatively impacting today were formed. So I, I, I want, you know, if we do, we have had a theme somehow, we didn't plan this, but we have had a theme of brainwashing in this conversation. I want people to be super clear, we're not talking about any conspiracy or these people are trying to brainwash or any, any of that stuff. I can't give examples in case this gets censored, <laughs> another form of brainwashing, but there you go. And, but it's also, it, 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 it's about what I think the message is coming through so far is this sense of, look, you know, at least be open to questioning your version of events. So, yeah, it's not, 
um, about a a conspiracy to keep everybody in a certain mindset. I mean, you know, it can be if you like. But I think we're not... doing it to ourselves without needing anyone else. <laughs> that's that's the point. That's my point. Absolutely. So so what do we what do we want as as human beings? Well, we're, maybe we want a lot of things, but one of the most basic things that we that we are after is some form of togetherness and security of some kind. It's very hard for most of us, maybe impossible for, for most of us, to stand solo and alone without anybody, without anything. And, and maybe it's not even a good thing. So we want to be with others and we want to be connected and we want to be, we want to be safe. Um, so it's very easy and it's very deep, it's a very deep motivation that wouldn't be conscious, that would be very, very deep. So the natural default for people is to, is to go along with the, the norm. Whatever the norm is, is to go along with it. You know, the natural default is not to, uh, to say to your uh, member of your family, what are you talking about? That's not correct. The natural default is to, is to want to be together and, and with them and, and love them and them love you. So not to rock the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not, it doesn't have, the, the brainwashing doesn't have to come from any, any bad place. It's almost like an accident. It happens accidentally in some ways. I mean, there yeah, may be another even dimension. People that are, might even think they are trying to change, you know, do that on to other people. They're often operating from their own conditioning. <laughs> so it's like this endless loop until enough of us in a way kind of at least see this, the stories. And like you say, at the beginning of this conversation about, you know, at least being able to be open to entertain um, and, and, and be open to more information, not resist or reject or instantly, you know, unfollow or whatever, just because I don't agree with today's word. There's a, there's a movement in, in the world, conscious or unconscious, coordinated or not coordinated, who can say, but there's definitely a movement in the world towards sameness and and this is the root of, uh, of why I think it, brainwashing is so difficult and so bad and why I call it that. Because fundamentally, humans are all different. We're all part of, the, of one, but we're all different parts of that one. So humans are unique. We, we all look different. We, we think differently and we feel differently. We move around the world differently. But there is a movement to, that wants to kind of rub that out a little bit. It doesn't like that. I mean, maybe it's always been there, but it's very strong now where there's a, there's a whole idea of, yeah, yeah, you can look different to me if you want, but really you need to think the same as me and you need to act the same as me. And if you don't, there must be something wrong somewhere, they will say. And that's where I think the brainwashing gets a little bit more, um, a little bit more difficult and a little bit harder to break out of because, you know, the, the, the movement towards sameness is very... It's not good, I think. It's not, it's not really where we want to go. And so we look back to what I said earlier. So it's if we are identifying ourselves and drawing our identity and sense of self from what we believe and what you know are our opinions, if that is where we're drawing our sense of self, then our, literally our sense of self can be shaken and threatened if someone holds a different opinion, which is, again, why I, I, I say, you know, earlier, how much, why I'm so into the silence, inner, inner presence of silence and, and stillness and, and this permanent, unchanging, anchored state or being or whatever you want to call it, because that for me does give me the ability to comfortably have my opinions challenged. Absolutely. So I think, I think it's all to do with sp spotting the difference between and and making a difference between who you are and what you do. And I think those lines have been quite blurred. And I think a lot of people say what they do, but they make it who they are. Mm. So a simple, stupid example. Um, you, might, um, you might build a, uh, a shed down the bottom of the garden or wherever, you know, you might get some bricks and build something. Uh, and then you might decide to call yourself a bricklayer or a builder. Well, yeah, that's not true. Even if you did that for a living, even if you spent 12 hours a day every day 
doing that and you did that for 40 years, you wouldn't be a bricklayer. That's just a title. That's just a badge that you're wearing. It's not who you are. But I think a lot of people are in a situation where they've, they've took the badge, whatever it might be, lots mm -hmm. of different kinds of badges, and they, they think that that's who they really are. And it's so not who they really are. It's just what they do. I, had, I wrote about this in my Cam Cure book because I really saw within myself that I had become, I'd, I'd, I'd accidentally identified into the identity of best-selling author. And what that was doing was it was stopping me from writing freely because I was trying to write another bestseller as opposed to just writing what was there to be written. There was a subtle editing going on of what will people think if I write this? Will it be popular? Will it be liked? Will it, or will you, will it, you know what I'm trying to say? It okay. was, it was messing with my authenticity in that moment of, of being whatever I was in that moment, because I was trying to live up to this idea that I'd accidentally kind of picked up. And when I saw it, I was obviously able to let it go. But we do that in so many different ways. I don't mean to be like, oh, best thing. That's maybe a bit of a... <laughs> No, it's, it's makes fancy, the point. It's definitely example. but we can do it all the time with with all the labels that we hold. And one of the main things that I try to share through Mind Detox, and I know that you do, is is helping people to kind of go beyond these labels, these identifications that are temporary and they may be what you do, but they're not what you are. And again, going back to or going forward to this upcoming book that you are coming out called Soul Strong, is that got some? I mean, I get a sense it must be about finding a, a, a more permanent source of inner strength as we move through whatever is going on in the world. No? Absolutely. Absolutely what it is. It, it's, it, the core of it is, is that you're not your body, you're not your mind, and you're not your feelings. That's not who you are. You use those things. Um, sometimes they use you, but you use those things. You're able to, to use those things to navigate through the world and, and have a, a, an interesting and decent and worthwhile human experience for yourself and others. But they're not who you are. The body is not who you are. Your mind is not who you are. Your feelings are not who you are. And really, I go into you know, uh, great depth as to how it's easy to identify with these things and how to get out of identifying with these things. It's awesome. So glad you're writing about this. It needs to get out there more because, you know, I, I, a lot of my work these days is, is helping people with their fundamental identity crisis. A lot of their problems are ultimately coming from identity crisis. That's what I see because ultimately they they believe there's someone or something that they're not. And that is, it can mess them up in so many different ways. And like, for example, believing that you're the voice in your head or, the way you're feeling or the, or the condition that you have or the job title that you've been given or your bank statement or whatever, getting beyond these temporary things, it does all f follow through with what we've been talking about all day. It gives you an ability to be strong and resilient irrespective of what's happening in the temporary relative and transient world. Absolutely. That's exactly the, the point. Um, it is difficult, though, as we know, as many listeners will know, it is difficult because um, it is easy to adopt these, these labels of who I am without even knowing it, kind of like you were just saying. And certainly there doesn't have to be any malice. I mean, you, you can adopt a, a, a label and, and do it for perfectly good intentions without meaning to cause damage or harm to yourself or anybody. But actually it becomes very bad down the road. And there's many labels, uh, many false identities, and but but many people they 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 want them. They, you know, they, they, they I want to say they need them. They think they need them. They think they need them. Um, and they, and it goes very deep. It's it's not just being a bricklayer or being a best-selling author. I mean, you know, I'm a. Um, I, I am a, so let's use that language, I am a 48-year-old white English guy. I'm nothing of the sort. That's, that's not who I am. That's, that's, that's my temporary existence and, and uh, the place and the time which I am embodied in. But it's no way what I am. It's absolutely no way who I really am. It's kind of what I do. It's the vehicle that I use. Um, it's the setting that I found myself in. It's the way that I move through life, but it's not who I am. And to make, to separate that out is really crucial. But 
a bit tricky, actually. It can be. And I'm, I'm, I'm taking a step back as, as a listener to what we're talking about right now. And, we, and we've, we actually have shared quite a few concepts that could, could be a little bit unsettling if you've not come across it before, you know, well, I, I thought I was my thoughts, my, 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 my beliefs, my, my opinions and, and all that sort of stuff. And what do I do with this information? So I guess as we I need to start bringing this conversation to a close, I would like to see if we can kind of end on making sure people leave this conversation with a way of maybe a practical way from you in order to leave this conversation feeling stronger than when, they, when we started. So is there anything you can share that, that, that we can bring this to a more strong so, conclusion? Absolutely. So, so I've been saying how, uh, you know, how, how it's not good to be identifying with the body, mind or the feelings. So we've, I've focused on, the, on the what you don't want to do because it's not good. But actually, that's, that, that's, that's much smaller because stepping into the idea that you are not really any of those things is so liberating and empowering and freeing. Um, it's, it's almost indescribable, really. Moving from one belief system to another belief system, a product of the mind, is not, is not a, um, a liberation. You, you leave one tribe or viewpoint and you go to another tribe or viewpoint. That's not a liberation. That's I just... Don't think... I sometimes describe that as moving from one part of your mind to a prettier part of your mind, but you're still in. You're still in the mind. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and you're still in maybe somebody else's thoughts. It's just a different person's thoughts than you were before. That's so, kind of positive thinking right there and there. You move from one part of the mind to a prettier part, but it's, you know, it's, it's a nicer place to hang out, but you're still in the illusion. Exactly. So the better solution is to step out of that game entirely which is not a resignation from life at all. In fact, it's a stepping into life. It's a stepping into something which is, which is, as I say, much freer, much bigger, much more interesting, much more exciting. And you're not alone when you do it. This is where the you know, spiritual warning comes in. Uh, you're not alone when you do it because then, and actually I think only then, does the universe really have your back. I think the universe can't actually have your back i mean it might have it but it's struggling the universe is going to struggle to guide you mm. if you're if you're in the mind in the body in the feelings you step out of all that you can be totally guided and supported and nudged forward and empowered by the strength of the universe that's the spiritual dimension to it when you open up to that the moment you leave all the rest of the nonsense behind what i found in my, in my own experience which is completely links you know approves of what you're saying, or I've lost the right phrase, but um, supports it, is that I was really confused when I was in the, the, the mind and emotions and, and all that sort of stuff, like you were saying before. And then when I found more presence and peace and stillness and clarity, then I started noticing that my life was being guided by either intuition or inspiration and invitation. So either it was like this internal inspiration where I just have this fully formed idea of something to do, like like this podcast. I was like, hey, let's do this or whatever. And, it, and, and for me, inspiration is a thought that has the energy to help bring it into creation built in. So you have like the, the kind of, it's not just a passing random thought. So you, you have some energy with it to actually start to bring it in mm -hmm. from the non-physical thought world to the, the physical world. So you've got this inspiration, this inner movement. And so that's one way that my purpose reveals itself or uh, I'm guided. And then the second way is uh, invitation. Like someone comes along and says, hey, have you thought of doing a podcast? Or <laughs> like, have you thought of coming on my podcast, Richard? Or whatever. And so like, there's, a, there's invitation as well. And, and again, it's really obvious when the invitation is, is, is not a red herring or a distraction or a taking off purpose. If there's more clarity, if there's more stillness and presence and peace, as opposed to being, well, should I, shouldn't I? And how does I feel about this? And all this sort of stuff. That can be really confusing to that kind of, that simple inspiration and invitation uh, unfoldment of purpose. Absolutely. And everything you've described there, it comes from, for my uh, language, comes from 
that the stepping out of the game. It comes from when you're when you're not your body, not your mind, not your feelings. So things are very uncertain in the world. So uh, you alluded to this earlier on. Stepping out of the the body, the mind, and the feelings are all unstable. They're all temporary. They all pass. They all change. The body, the mind, and the feelings are instability. You step out of the instability and you step into the the, the invitation and the inspiration kind of vibe that you're talking about then you're into stability then you're into things that are stable so you then have you then have both you have stability within instability so we go about then our business in the world in the unstable world but we are stable as we move through it in the world not of the world type thing in the world not of the world but you know what? Like, I love that you're saying that because I want to make sure as we bring this conversation to a close that none of what we've said today is about spiritual bypassing. No. It's, ex- it's, it's the polar opposite of that because what you're describing is a, a complete human experience, undenying of anything, but actually willing, having the strength and willingness to experience whatever comes our way. And it's not about just, oh, ignoring that negative thought and burying my head in the spiritual sand. It's actually knowing that you're not that thought, knowing who you really are, does heal your relationship with so much of life. Uh, brilliant, yeah, because uh, spiritual bypass is, is, a, is a problem. It, it can, it's not a good way to go. It, is, it happens. It's understandable that it happens. You know, the world is challenging. But no, we want, we want full engagement in the world. I think you want full engagement in the world. But from the position of that stability not from the instability of whatever your body or your mind or your feelings are telling you that moment. I've seen, you know, earlier how you said the more intellectual or clever someone becomes, the the more brainwashed they can be. I've seen this in the spiritual world where the more spiritual people become, sometimes they can become more spiritual bypassing. Oh, yes. Have you observed that yourself? Yes, without doubt. Um, It's... Yeah, you, you, you can't, I, we're, we're in the world, we're in the body, with mind, with feelings. We, when the object is not to discard those things. The object is to use those, they're blessings, they're gifts. The object is to use those gifts to a positive. But, but often we don't, and it's not easy to use them to a positive, but we've got to use them, we've got to direct them. Um, Spiritual bypassing is where we just say, oh, I renounce the body, I renounce the mind, I renounce the feelings, I renounce everything. I don't want to be bothered with any of that stuff. That's not, that's not the answer, I think. I saw this in my own world because my, my favourite book is my least popular book, <laughs> Calm Cure, because, because that book is basically challenging this condition that we talked about today. It's saying, look, the world, life is happening on a spectrum of possibilities. Sometimes you get what you think you want. Sometimes you get what you don't think you want. And sometimes you get stuff you haven't even thought about. And our peace and liberation is about our willingness to experience the full spectrum. And so the whole process is about clearing the condition that would cause us to, you know, fight the fruitless fight with, with reality once it's already here, you know? Um, so I, I just find it interesting how, like, when you're talking there, I saw a connection between, like, sometimes people, like, they... they, they they don't want to go where we've been talking about today. So what would you be your closing words of encouragement uh, for someone who, who does really want to become more soul strong and uh, less, less potentially brainwashed and, and more secure in, in, in the world as, as we currently find it? There's another, there's another path available that doesn't involve um, worrying about what you look like worrying about what you believe and uh, and being hooked in by your feelings. There's another path. We don't have to live there. We can go another way. And the other way, um, it seems like a dark alleyway in the corner, but as soon as you turn the corner, it's actually brilliant white light and it's supportive and it will look after you and it's much more interesting. Um, it's much richer. Uh, it's much bigger. And it it's where you can be who you really are. The, the body, the mind, and the feelings, if, if, if we're not careful, it doesn't have to be like this, but if we're not careful, they can be a prison. They can, they can be very restrictive. We think, we think it's freedom, 
intellectuals. They think it's freedom when they're learning something new. But if they're only learning it down the tracks that they had before, they're just getting more and more imprisoned in their mind. There's a million examples of that. Freedom is when you can step out of all that and say, that's not who I am. I, I, I am something different. And you, you begin the quest then to find out what that is. You so is that the first step to someone listening today? That, that what you just said, is that their first step that you'd like to leave them with? Yeah, I mean, numerology assists in this. I mean, it's just one of the many ways and many things that can assist. But anything that helps you to know who you are and what you're for and that helps you to release this body, mind, feelings prison, escape from it, that's the first step to take. Well, thank you. Thank or you for this. even consider about. Sorry? Or, or to even consider. To, awareness is the key to change. So... The, even the ability to consider that, that some of what was said is, is true actually starts to open the door. And the irony of obviously is we're not saying any of what we said today is true. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yes. It's also not radical. They're not the only people saying it. There's plenty of people who, who think this and say this. So th 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 this is not radical or revolutionary, really. Well, well, thanks for like, you know, ending the podcast on this. Actually, what we've said today is nothing that new and it's not very... Right. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it depends where you look. I mean, if, if it, is, it is brand new and it is radical and revolutionary, if you've never been exposed to this kind of view before. So it depends I, mean, I think anyone look. listening to this is going to have a chance to suffer less of their, from their own psychology this in the next few days, having ha heard this conversation. Even if you've not, uh, even if you've heard it all before, um, the the recent reminder may just help us to su suffer less from our own psychology in the next few days. And I think that'd be a pretty good result. You are not your body. You are not your mind. You are not your feelings. You're something else, and that something else is bigger and better. Absolutely. And when you know that you're not that, you can actually get to finally really enjoy all these aspects of the human experience. Absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you so much, uh, Richard, for uh, joining me today. Nice to see you, mate. No and problem. good luck with the new book, uh, Soul Strong. Thank you. I'll let you know. Lots of love. Take care, mate. See ya.